ahead and welcome everyone uh, to the Engineering Management and Operations Management webinar series. My name is Karen Hickenbotham, and um, I'll be moderating the session today. We ask that you save all questions until the end of the presentation. Um, we'll be utilizing the chat box at the end of the presentation. We prefer to keep everyone's audio off just for the sake of confusion. And we also want to let everyone know that this is, session is being recorded and will be posted on the ScholarWorks at UARC in our Operations Management Collection of Presentations. And I'll say this at the end again, but everyone will receive a link to the recording as well as a copy of the presentation and any other pertinent information that we go over here in the session today. So thanks again for everyone for joining us on your Tuesday evening. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, today's presenter, we have Dr. Eric Specking. Um, Eric serves as the Assistant Dean for Enrollment Management and Retention for the College of Engineering at the University of Arkansas. Specking received a BS in Computer Engineering, an MS in Industrial Engineering, and a PhD in Engineering from the University of Arkansas. His research interests include decision quality, resilient design, set-based design, engineering and project management, and engineering education. During his time at the University of Arkansas, Eric has served as Principal Investigator co-principal investigator or senior personnel on over 40 research projects totaling over $6.6 .6 million, which produced over 50 publications, including journal articles, book chapters, conference proceedings, newsletters, and technical reports. He is an active member of the American Society for Engineering Education and International Council on Systems Engineering, where he has served in various leadership positions. So please everyone join me in welcoming Dr. Eric Specking, uh, who will be talking about data analytics for operations managers and how that uh, fits ties into our one of our newer programs, a graduate micro certificate on analytics for operations managers. Eric, thank you so much for being with us today and we look forward to your presentation. Well, thank you for that. Um great introduction. I'm glad that my bio could have been useful to someone. Um, and <clears throat> my pronouns are he, him, and his. And if you notice, to make a more inclusive uh, presentation, we did turn on live transcripts, so closed captioning is on if you um, need it. So today's presentation is going to be about analytics. And I know it's advertised as data analytics for operation managers, which is basically what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to start by wanting you to do an exercise. And what that is, is I want you to think about this question. So pick one simple process that your current position, whether you're a student, maybe you're unemployed and you're searching for a job, maybe you're a manager or a line operator, no matter what that position is, think about it. To think about a process, a simple process that you're required to do. Okay, think about it for you know a few seconds, right? Hopefully you got it. Now start breaking down that process. Try to take it and really divide it into smaller process. Like what steps did you have to do? I know, like when I got up this morning, you know there was. I have to get my coffee, but to make my coffee, you know, I have to go get my um, K-cup pod. I have to make sure I have water, right? What are the processes that you need to do that step, right? Now, once you have those processes in mind, think, did it require any type of inputs, information, data, or did you have to make decisions? Like think about my coffee, right? I needed the actual coffee grounds. I needed water. And believe it or not, I forgot my mug a couple of times and that creates a mess, but you got to have the mug, right? And you got to make sure you make the decision about which cup size to put. So there's various things that we do in all everyday life, right? Now keep that in mind. And now think about these questions. Does your organization use data to inform decision making right so we went from a small, small simple pro um, you know process maybe but now think about your organization line do you think that they use data to inform decision making i know karen you, you karen you turned off the um the the, the audio which I, I like feedback but that's okay we're going to keep with that format and but think to yourself right and also think to yourself 
are you using the right data or are they using the right data or information? And are there additional data or information that you could use to improve your decision making? Because now you're probably thinking, okay, you've had me think a lot. I thought I was here to listen, but what are you getting to the point, right? And really the point is, let's be honest, data is everywhere, right? And a lot of times we think data is, you know, maybe in those old folder files or in our, um, that wasn't supposed to progress, like in the file folder files or on our desktop or in our file system on our computer. Like a lot of times we think about those as traditional data, but there's data being collected if we are collecting or not, or being used or not. And a lot of the things that we do, right? It's not just those physical or virtual files. It could be information that we aren't counting. It could be the temperatures of, um, say, a distillation column that we're not really looking at, or just the temperature of the office that we're not looking at. It could even be all those co comment boxes that we may or may not read on a survey or, you know, the, you know, employee tip box that we may might at least read once, right? And I know you're probably thinking, but Dr. Specking, I'm not a statistician, a mathematician, a data analyst, a data scientist. So why, like, why are we thinking about data and trying to break it down? Because, you know, I, I'm thinking about maybe operations management, right? Or I'm in operation management or aspire to be in operation management or just as a manager. And if you are aspiring to be in operation management or, or a manager, you're going to see some of this slide again. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I copied it from um, Karin's presentation that she's going to go over a little bit later. And operation managers, in general, they lead and manage business and government operations to effectively create and deliver products and services. But for us to do this, and I underlined it and put it in bold, meaning that's important, operations to effectively create and deliver products and services. So if you think about it and break that down, right, I just ask you to think about processes at the beginning of this. The processes you do is your operations. It's what you're operating to achieve something, right? Now for our organizations and businesses, you know, whether it's government, nonprofit, industry, doesn't matter whatever that organization is, what we're trying to do is to operate to achieve value. And that value really, it's going to require a strong understanding of the organization you got to have a strong understanding of the business model, the processes, and the value to, or excuse me, the data to get to the value. And that is the key, right? And so this is why we're here today to talk about data analytics for operation managers and just data in general, is that it's so important in today's time. If you go look at job posting, you see a lot of like data analysts, data scientists, and lots of data engineers, all kinds of other jobs out there with the, the word data in it. But in reality, management, operation managers, like all of us, the future, we have to be able to understand data and not only be able to understand it, we need to be able to, especially as an operation manager, if someone gives us an analysis, we have to understand what they did, how they did it, uh, to be able to ask the right questions to ensure that we can use that or trust it to inform our decision-making, right? And so if you want to be in operations and create your products, data is important. So how do we use data to add value? And I will tell you, I modified these steps based off of um, a six-step process is very common in uh, the data industry, uh, but I, I broke it down to a little bit more. And because in reality, you, you got to start with identifying what is the data, right? And then once you identify it, you have to actually collect it because you can't really do something if you don't collect it, right? Um, especially if you're thinking, you know, the future of the advanced machine learning and artificial intelligence type of um, methods and techniques, right? It has to have it. So you got to collect it. But collecting it is not where it ends. Once you have it, you really have to understand it and understand, is it the right 
thing to collect and the right thing to identify to get to the problem. If not, maybe you put it on the shelf, still collect it. It um, could be useful for something else, but you got to understand it. But then after you understand it, then you got to do something with it, which is, you know, maybe applying some statistics or some machine learning or other type of techniques to get some type of information out of it, right? And that's getting to the gather insights, right? Well, you're going to look at those analyses to gather some insights and then based off of all the information you have in front of you as a, an operation manager or an engineering manager, whatever that role is, the decision maker is going to use it to make a decision. And because that's where the value being added is, right? That we want to use data to help make things better, which comes from making some type of decisions. But let's be honest with ourselves. A lot of times in courses, I'm not gonna lie, like a lot of times you see about the do something, but in reality, you're gonna spend a lot of a time doing this, looking at the identifying, collecting and understanding, right? It takes a long time. I always tell students, finding the data and finding the relationships and understanding it often takes in, in making it organized like processing and doing some of the other things that I didn't put on this that's traditionally in the six steps. Uh, but you usually spend a lot of time on that and the modeling is a smaller part of it because if you don't understand what you do or using, garbage in equals garbage out. Like you can have a really great, beautiful model or beautiful analysis that does nothing for you, right? So we wanna make sure what we're doing throughout this entire process is gonna lead to value added. And that means, um, you know, will our model, model be 100% perfect? And I'm gonna tell you, no. I always tell all students, models are 100% wrong because if it's 100% like the real thing, then it's not a model, it's the actual thing, right? So what our job as analysts or operation managers or whatever that role is that you're looking at using in insights or creating models to um, get insights for, right? Is we're trying to make those models as useful as possible. And to make them as useful as possible, we can have the right data, the right relationships and use them in the right ways with the right stakeholder information at the right time to then inform the right decision. I know that was a lot of rights, uh, but that's all how it goes together because you spend a lot of time doing those things, but if you use the wrong do something and together insights, you're still gonna get to negative results. So the yellow box has to be solid and the red or the orange box has to be solid. Because if not, if one of those or both of those are weak or incorrect, you're going to get negative results in the making the decisions because you might be solving the wrong decisions. And that's where the new certificate program that um, our operation management and engineering management program comes in play. The courses are going to focus more in this green, or excuse me, in this orange box area. Um, and that, and here's more information about the analytics for operation manager management graduate certificate. And so this graduate micro certificate, it is a micro certificate. So it's going to be two courses, which we'll get a little bit into later, but it has two main goals. We want to help provide you with the necessary skills to identify, analyze, interpret various types of data that you're going to find in your operating environments, right? And then the second thing is we want to participants to be able to communicate the analysis and results effectively to their decision makers, again, for decision making. So it goes back to what I was just talking about. Those are the goals. And if you look at the objectives and the learning outcomes, they kind of just build upon how we are achieving those goals, right? But you might be asking, so why micro certificate? Why not just make, why should I not just go get a data science degree, right? Uh, why, why is it good just about getting this micro certificate? And why a micro certificate is one, all employers need lifetime learners, right? And since it is a micro certificate, it's gonna be a really quick way to learn specific knowledge and skills around particular areas. 
And since it's a few credit requirements, you could use those towards um, not just the micro certificate, but maybe a graduate certificate or a master's degree. Because by having those certificates, you can put it on your CV and show proof of those capabilities right then and there. Because let's be honest, it's not like all of our employers is going to look through your entire transcript and say, oh, you took a course in X. Great. That means you can do this for me, right? No, they're just really going to look at your degree. And if your degree isn't not really associated with that topic, how can you get those skills? Yeah, you can go Google and um, you know go into Link to Learn and do some of those MOOCs and all those other things out there. By having a micro certificate, you can put it on and say, hey, I did this. It's certified, it, it's through an accredited university, it's got to add value. And that creates additional opportunity to help not only accelerate, accelerate towards a graduate degree, but accelerate your career in the direction you want. I always talk to students about when you're looking at graduate degrees or even undergraduate degrees, it's about what skills you want to achieve to help you add value to your organizations. And micro graduate certificates are great ways for people in industry to be able to do that. Now, how we're getting this graduate micro certificate for our operation managers and data analytics is through two courses. The first course is OMGT 5653, which is Introduction to Analytics. The second one is OMGT 5693, which is Analytics or Advanced Analytics and Visualizations for Operation Managers. And when you look at this, it seems a lot, right? Because it's talked about with you, if you look at the learning outcomes and the course objectives, everything from applying descriptive statistics to you know, doing proficiencies in our programming, applying classification methods to analyzing categorical data and applying appropriate visualization techniques. So these are those specific things that were helped getting towards those two overall goals of that micro certificate, right? But in general, we had a lot of conversations. This, this micro certificate was not just created by me. These courses were not just created by me. It was created by a group of really smart people, people smarter than me, let me tell you. Learned a lot by them. I'm Dr. Carrie Bean, as well as um, Dr. Robin Carr. They were instrumental in creating this. And we had tons of conversations about how do you balance the skills that operation managers need, and then those also skills about doing this stuff. Like, right, how do you actually create um, some of those analytical skills. I do a um, regression, linear regression analysis in R um, based off a of data set, right? And what we did is, and what this graduate certificate does a great job to do, is it balances how to ask the right questions and how to use analysis to enable decision making while providing you with some skills, which would be R scripts, to be able to implement techniques on your own. And so the course topics, you know, there are several course topics. So OMGT 56, 53, you're gonna start with basic concepts of computing. Cause let's be honest, if you've never had a programming course and since operation management doesn't require calculus one or, um, you know, you can come from any background. So maybe you haven't had a programming type course but that sequential um, thinking on how computers run is different. So. We talk about some basic computing concepts, but then we also get into some um, graphical um, display and analysis of data. So when you think about having a scatter plot versus a line plot, as you can see in this example, what's the benefit of one? When would you do one from the other, right? But we also talk about like supervised versus unsupervised machine learning. I'm not gonna go in depth about all these topics. I'm just giving you an idea. Uh, we talk about linear regression. Uh, we, we talked about K nearest neighbor. And you know that's basically looking at, okay, so based off the data and what value of K, how do you classify it based off of how the other ones around it were classified, right? We also get to K-mean clustering. Affinity analysis, which is also a basket analysis. So think about it like this, that, okay, um, think about if you shop on Amazon or walmart.com or any of your favorite online shopping, how a lot of them would, you know, you put something in your cart, it would like, you also might like this. That's exactly what the affinity analysis helps with, right? Uh, but how do you do that? 
classification tree, which is getting to like decision tree. So how can I break down based off the data and all the attributes or think about columns that I have to then say, oh, based off all of these things, it'll be, it should be classified of this based off of this tree. Right. And that's getting into that introduction to data analytics. Then when you get into the advanced, we're talking about text mining and you're going to start off with, OK, so I have this like say comment box or say you want to um, input an entire digital textbook. Right. But you wanted to look at word frequencies or create a word cloud. How do you do that to get insights from from that um, text data? Right. But then we take a step to looking at binary logistic regression, both the nominal logistic regression, which is basically binomial logistic regression is like, okay, I have some data, um, but the answer can only be say yes or no, or maybe it will be blue or green, right? And, but only blue or green. Now, a multinomial logistic regression would be how do we have all this data and then say make it blue, green, red, orange, um, turquoise, however many other colors that you want based off of um, the classification of the data, right? Then we also look at network discovery and network analysis, right? And we're not going to make you an operations researcher. And we even tell students in a lot of these sections, do not Google this. Or if you do, be prepared that you're going to go down some rabbit holes because network analysis, like network optimization, graph theory, they're huge fields in themselves. Like in the University of Arkansas, we have experts in those fields, right? So what we're trying to give you the ideas are try to how to, can you think about how things in your operating environment could be related based off a of network? And then how could you visualize that? And then how could that help you with the decision making? And we do give some of the very basic network analysis, like um, what happens if I cut one of these nodes out? Um, how, how does that affect my shortest path, the longest path? Some very, um, some of the basic network um, analyses. We start talking about ensemble methods and random force classifications. And we use a lot of these things also to get to sentiment analysis, which is also, which is kind of like, okay, so I had this text. How can I just based off the text and based off some algorithm classify the information as positive, neutral, negative? So think about, okay, I um I just put in my review of this, um, say my presentation, Dr. Specking did an amazing job. It was great. I would highly recommend it. So hopefully how I said all those things in the words, you would say that would be a positive review, right? But if I were like, oh, that presentation was not useful, didn't learn anything, it was a waste of time, you would automatically want to classify that as negative, right? But if we have to read every single um, type of review, unless they provide a, you know, this type of classification for us, that could be time consuming. So how can we use techniques to provide that for us? And that's what sentiment, sentiment analysis does, right? And so how we teach and how we assess all of these different activities comes from three big things. We're going to do individual assignments, team activities, and then we're going to do exams, right? And I know several of you are thinking like, a Dr. Speck at work full time, working with teams makes it complicated. And I, I understand because I did my master's and PhD while I work full time and it does complicate your schedule. But let's be honest, in our workforce and, and the things I do as well, we never do them alone. We're always working with others, having to figure out how I can work with this person in that time zone or that other person in this other time zone, but how can we get together to achieve our strategic objective, right? And so team, um, you know, team skills is vital for success, no matter your field, industry, or job. So it's, a, it's important that we also get some of those skills as well along the way, right? So to, as an example, um, looks like I've been going for about 34 minutes, so I have a little bit. I'll, I'll kind of show some examples. So when you look at, uh, this is my content example, one of four. So we might start the week with, okay, here's the overview of the week. 
So here's the objectives of what we want you to, and this example is week three of the advanced course. And the learning activities that you're gonna do is laid out as you're gonna read this, you're gonna watch this, and you're gonna complete all of the week three assessments, which assessments is gonna be a individual assessment 3.1, individual assessment 3.2, and then a team assignment, okay? So we're gonna be using for this learning, a mix of required textbook readings, uh, creative videos and other reading materials, like you see this reading here, that's additional reading, mat reading materials. And it could be our own videos, but we also might use online resources to help you learn the content as well. So you can see you know, the links to the presentation, you could click the video and then go. And the, the video presentation is how we're kind of balancing the learning the material at the right level for the operation manager. And, and so, like I said, this is, provides important insights for the operation manager to understand the concept. So with this example, um, it's looking at analytics and visualizations um, for operation manager around logistic regression and getting into multinomial. So we, we well, by this point, since it's week, week three, week two already covered binomial. So you already have a huge background on logistic regression, but then it gets into, okay, regression from a stat perspective, building on to um, how do we go from a two to a multiple var variable category. And you can see where we kept the math um, as simple as possible. And we're explaining this um, in video as well, right? And then we're showing some examples to help kind of ma make the math make sense for those who don't have the math background. But we're also gonna be honest that if you want to go down the rabbit hole and have more of the math background, the textbook has, um, and some of the other materials will have some more information. And of course, as your instructor, we can direct you into uh, more of that math heavy of intents. But from an operation manager perspective, you don't really have to have all that detailed math background. We try to get to the key points of what's needed to help you understand it from a concept level. So if someone brought it to you, you could speak intelligently about it um, and ask the right questions to make sure they did it right. Right. And then we're going to get to the individual ass assess or application problem. And this gets in the individual. I told you this one had two. Right. And what these are do is try to get you to that skill. Right. And what that is going to do is walk you through some code and analysis and that they're all auto graded questions. So you can do them multiple times to check that, hey, am I doing it right? If not, you can go back and change and see why it's not right. You can come ask the instructor for questions because this is set up to help you take the concepts to see by seeing it being performed and you running through the code, what does it look like to do it? And what does it take to do it to get, make sure you understand the application? Of it? And like I said, you can complete it as many times as possible. And you can see here's an example on the right hand side, of this IAP, it walks through, it has a prompt. It's saying, okay, we're gonna uh, pull up chapter 11 of the textbook. And then it says on this page, uh, it says to do X. And so it just starts walking you through. And then we have some questions to, to check you walking through the code at, in tandem with the textbook and this IAP, individual application problem. And so then after you did the IAPs and you watched the videos and all of that, then you should start the next thing, which could be an individual assignment, but most individual, individual assignments are gonna be IAPs. Typically it's gonna be going into either an exam or a team assessment. And so this gives you a good example of a week three team assessment. And um, what this does, it requires you to understand the concept and how, the, how to execute the R code. So you're gonna to have to have that understanding of the code from the IAPs understand the concepts to be able to make the decision and communicate what you did and how you did it, right? And that's what the, this idea is. So then you're gonna be able to walk through this team assignment with, um, you know, you, typically it's two to three people sometimes, um, you know, we might have a team of one based off the class size, but typically two to three is the group sizes. And by that way, you can take what you've learned individually 
look at it, put your thoughts together, and then come together to divide and conquer it. And one of the things that we used to help the team process um, at the beginning of the semester is a team charter to help you um, lay down some rules um, and communication and all those great things to help make sure you start your team off right. And it's also a great document to go to if you have team conflict, conflict to go back to to help resolve some of that team conflict as well. And with that being said, that gives you a look at the micro certificate as well as data analytics and operations management. So any questions? Great, thank you so much, Eric. So we're gonna uh, reserve this time. Uh, we try to make the presentations fairly short so we have time for a discussion, questions um, from everyone who's attending. So uh, right now, I will go ahead and just briefly go over an overview of our programs while everyone is kind of formulating their questions. You may type them in the chat box. I went ahead and enabled the, um, the hand gestures as well if you would like to ask your question to Eric one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Uh, without being muted, uh, I'm totally fine with that as well. So um, we'll go to the next slide real quick, Eric, just for a few minutes, and then we'll get back to questions. Um, so for those who are not currently students in the operations management program um, or alumni, uh, we often get asked, what is operations management? And we just simply say that it lead, leads and manages business and government operations to effectively create and deliver products and services. So this includes some of the things that Eric has mentioned, but process design, location, layout, supply chain, among other things. And then we also have a program um, in engineering management, and often people ask us, uh, what does that entail? And what that does is it takes a technical degree for engineering, and it um, blends into some of the operations management concepts. So it's a hybrid between um, engineering and then operations management. And engineering managers will lead technical workforces to develop new products and services uh, to achieve strategic uh, objectives. So Eric, if you want to go to the admission requirements slide for me next, the next one. So just quickly, just an overview of the programs are a bit different when it comes to admission requirements for an operations management degree or um, most the majority of our certificates, which I'll get to in a second. Um, we accept any bachelor's degree from an accredited institution currently uh, waiving the GRE for a 2.5 grade point average or above. For the engineering management program and some of their uh, certificates, we do require an ABET accreditation for the master's. Some of the certificates do um, only require a STEM degree. Uh, there is a 3.0 threshold on all coursework, uh, but again, conditional admission can be um, a case-by-case -case basis for a 2.5 or above. Next slide. And when we're often on the road and we're traveling and we're talking to people about our programs, you know, why MSOM or MSEM? And our motto is learn it today, use it tomorrow. And if you check out some of our social media, uh, we have uh, weekly student testimonials for students who are exiting our program or are almost done. And they will all tell you that at one point, in fact, several times during their, their career in the program, they were able to learn something uh, and apply it the next day, whether that be a concept, whether that be in a meeting, um, but they have all said that. And so we pride ourselves in that uh, learn it today and use it tomorrow. Our programs are 100% online. There are some in-person live classes uh, options, not many, but there are a few. Uh, there is a no thesis program. So that is another big draw uh, to why folks really like our program. The no thesis is, is definitely a plus. You can learn from professors with current and relevant experience. It's a flexible degree plan. There's 10 graduate courses, so a total of 30 credit hours. Uh, we'll get to this in a second, but the certificates that Eric has been mentioning, uh, you can earn those concurrently without taking any extra courses. So if you have questions on that, we'll be happy to answer those questions as well. Uh, there's no out-of-state tuition, so a total for a three-hour class is just under 1200 which makes it a very affordable program for our busy working professionals and also very um, um attractive for employees who offer a TA for tuition assistance programs. Next slide, please. And so for the graduate certificates and micro certificates, we have six each. Six of them are four courses. 
uh, which are 12 credit hours in total, or the two course micro certificates are a total of six credit hours. And so as you can see on the screen there for the graduate certificate for course options, we have project management, which is, has been our most popular, but it has been around the longest, Lean Six Sigma, Homeland Security. We have an operations management certificate, which can help you transition into your master's as well as for the engineering management uh, graduate certificate. Some folks are choosing that option to kind of maybe just try it out. Um, sometimes it's used as earning a credential along the way while you're getting your master's. And that brings me to the micro certificates is that um, stacking is uh, quite uh, popular nowadays where you can start to earn credentials in as little as one semester while you're working towards a long-term goal, maybe getting another graduate certificate or multiple certificates or eventually moving on to get your master's. So the two course certificates are in advanced air mobility, autonomous operations, analytics for operations managers, which we just went over, decision support for ops managers, leading operational change, systems engineering and engineering management, and then system engineering analytics. So we'd be happy to answer any questions about any of those programs. But next slide, please, Eric. We'll go ahead and get back to questions for you, which is why folks are here. Um, Kelly, good to see you. Kelly was um, just um, asked to participate in our annual faculty meeting, and she gave some great um, perspectives, student perspectives um, for all of our faculty. So Kelly, thank you so much for joining us again tonight. Glad to see you back. Um, but Eric, she asked, which programs or software are typically used in the professional world that uses our programming language? So I will say it depends on the industry, right? And like your company and, and the value. The thing about R as a language is that it's open source. You can download it and, um, you know, you don't have to pay anything. But you're going to see a lot of different, like when you get into the data science world, you're going to hear things like Azure, um, you know, or Power BI, Tableau, like Power BI and Tableau are great visualization software, right? You're going to hear like the programmers really talk about Python or R, depending on um, like what they just used the most is, is really what it comes down to. Some of them also you'll see Java, right? But it a lot of times depends on the language that that specific company does. But that's traditional data science. When you're talking operations management, let's be honest, like you could do a lot of things in Excel, right? It depends on how large your data set is and how complex of the analysis you need, right? Um, and I, I really think it depends on what you want to do. Does that help, Kelly? Because I know you and I had a conversation because you were trying to figure out, do I take this, you know, these data analytics courses or go to the path of the Excel courses that um, operation management and engineering management offer? Is that what you're trying to get to is still that decision? Um, well, I think I'm going to try to do both um but i guess it kind of dovetails into i think with this question i was just trying to make sure like you know i'm don't have any i'm not in any engineering i do handle a lot of data um and i just want to make sure i'm successful in the courses and if there's any way at work before i like start taking these courses if i can like start using programs that may already like use it you know to kind of familiarize myself with some of the ways that you can implement it. I guess that's kind of where I was going with it. Um, obviously, it, it definitely goes, you know, learning the uh, learning the data side kind of goes into the decision um, modeling. So, so I think those two kind of go hand in hand. Do you have um, any advice on like, are, all, are these classes all offered all year round or all eight week sessions? Or do you suggest taking certain ones before others? So, I always go back to what skills you want to achieve, right? And when you need them compared to another one, right? And I say when you need them compared to another one, because I know that you're a working professional and you're doing things with data now, right? Um, and so 
the, the both of the data analytics courses that I was talking about, the intro course is offered the first eight week in the fall and spring set, um, semesters. The second, the advanced analytic and visualization, visualization course is offered the second eight weeks in fall and spring semesters only. So neither of those are offered in the summer. Now, some of the Excel and on the others, I would have to go look up. I can't remember. Karin or um, Dr. Ham or Dr. Parnell, do any of you on the call know? I think she's talked about Kurt's class. Yeah, I talked to Kirk. I think that the advanced Excel is only offered second eight weeks, but the others are offered like any session. So I think it's just kind of going to be a little bit of a balancing act with the courses. Yeah. And so both of those classes add value, and they're both going to be helping you look at data using different tools. The techniques that you're going to learn in um, the courses that I've been talking about today are going to be a little bit more advanced um, than what the Excel is going to be going over, right? But both are going to add value skills, and I think all together will create a good data analytic skill set. Um, so I definitely encourage if you can do both and have time to do both, go for it. Um, I, I can tell you from my personal, like what I do when I get data, it used to be that um, I would get a data set and I would just use pivot tables in Excel to kind of look at it and to kind of understand it. And so once I started playing with more with R, I can tell you I, it, I can load it quicker and look at it quicker um, and more easily in R than I can with pivot tables and, and then some of the other things in Excel. I also can um, look at larger data sets in R more quickly than Excel. And so there's trade-offs there, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think that, I, I know you're, you're scared about the background. I do think that you would be able to be successful in these data analytics courses um, because one, we created a, a good materials to help walk you through it. Um, but two, I know I'm, I'm teaching it both all both courses in the fall and the spring this year. So I can um, promise you that I'm going to be around to help any students because I want them to learn. I always tell students, my success is their success because as a teacher, um, if they're not learning and they're, they're trying to do what I've at least laid out, right, then maybe how I communicated it or something's not clicking. So I want to be successful because my goal is for you to learn by helping you be successful. Thank you. Yeah, and that kind of answers my second question too, so I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I actually host um, live office hours once a week um, in all my classes for students to just jump on and we can talk about anything that's needed, whether it's the project, the in individual set assignments or content that they don't understand. And when a lot of students join, it becomes a great discussion. Um, and what's really cool is you start even in this online environment, seeing students help each other understand. Um, and in my one of my previous classes, I had a student who had a very elegant solution that I got their permission to add to our solution database. Um, it was pure mathematical solution that it's, which is one reason why I didn't do it uh, when we were coming up with solution because didn't think that students would go down that path. It was not the easiest path to go down, and but it was beautiful. So we added it, and then they talked about it, right? And so I think it's a great time to help us all learn from each other. So um, Vicente, thanks for joining us today. What are the prereqs, and more specifically, how deep into programming do the courses get? So for the micro certificate. If you are just seeking the micro certificate and not taking any of the courses that are will go toward your MSOM program, um, there are no prerequisites. But I'm going to let Eric answer the question as far as how deep into programming that they're going to get. And then, Eric, you may want to speak, um, since there are no prereqs, is there something, um, an area where you think students should have kind of leans to Kelly's question also a little bit about what kind of background students are coming from and maybe what would be more uh, maybe helpful to them. I was pulling up some code to share my screen on that. Oh, actually, you should be able to still see it. Uh, and then I think Daniel, 
yeah, he also asked, what about a student who has never had experience with programming? How would you handle one of those students in your courses or what advice okay. would you give them? All right, so I wanna make sure I break that down. So I'm gonna pull up the chat box. Um, um, so the when it comes to programming, like the extent of it, like we were saying, we're trying to give the skills. And so what we do is we give scripts, right? And so this is an example script from week two, and this is actually 2.F um, that walks you through. So it has comments in it. And the this the doc the word document it's not a word document um, on your end but the individual application pro problem is walking you through what is all this meeting and then you're executing it like, like on your computer or and through Citrix if you don't want to have it installed but you're executing it on your own or with the data set that you're loading in to do what we're trying to teach you through the process, okay? Uh, and it's like this, and so it's just executing. I'm gonna be honest, we don't really ask, ask you to change the code, except at the very end of the microcertificate, which is the last section, like the last assignment of week eight of the second course, uh, because by that point, you should have, been seeing a lot of our scripts to be able to then make some changes in it, to then run it and to get results, right? But for the most part, it's just walking through the scripts. And if you want to play and change it, we do encourage you to have that understanding, uh, but you are able to get through it running it. Um, because the idea is so you could take this and I and modify it so you can use it. Um, so that gives an example of that. Now, if you don't have a programming background, that's fine. This will be getting you introduced to that. And I know from talking to previous instructors of the first class that um, sometimes that can be challenging for students who have never had a programming course to understand what all those lines of code mean and um, get into some of the basics. But she says that when you break it down and talk with them, they are able to get it. Some students really dive in and they are able to jump on it and understand it and they stay, but we do have some students who drop, unfortunately. Did that answer all that question? I feel like there was multiple parts and there I'm is. a visual person. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I believe so. He can um, also uh, let us know if we didn't cover something that maybe he was asking more specifically in the chat or he's welcome to unmute himself, like I said. Um, but we've got one more question, uh, two-parter again. Um, so one would like to know, is the intro to data analytics, I'm sorry, is the advanced course an extension of the intro to data analytics class? And if so, or also like to know if they get the R Studio software to run the programs. Great. Okay. So um, I see it's from uh, D Debo Smith. Um, hopefully, I did not mispronounce your name. I tried, uh, but no. Yes. What? So was that correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you said it's fine, so that probably means that I, I still didn't get one hundred percent correct. So I apologize. <laughs> uh, but. Yes, it is an extension. So we're building off of those topics from the first one. And so you're getting in that first course, getting used to using R um, and um, using the different um, techniques from um, learning or supervised and unsupervised um, machine learning, right? And then the class, the second class is going to build off. The first class, we do some um, categorical um, classifications, uh, but a lot of the things that we're looking at is more numerical. So the second course, we're really focusing more on categorical and text-based analysis. And so that's why, like when I showed the content, um, starting with like, you know, how do you do data mining? Um, and data mining is a huge field, so we don't cover all of it, but we give you a taste. And so starting with 
a raw document? How do you make that a course? Like, how do you clean it? How do you um, prep it or stem it is what we call it um, to get it to be useful to do some of these different analysis on it. And we provide the R code and the packages to do that. Now, what it means about the application. So we do everything in the course in our studio, which you can go Google right now and download tonight. And there's tons and tons of, if you just Google, our um, like, oh, uh, let's say our basic R tutorials or R tutorials, you will find tons of great videos that will teach you R um, right there, right? And you could do it for free with R Studio by downloading on your machine. Now, for the students who don't want to download it on their computer through these courses, um, our program gives students access to through Citrix. And so Citrix Lab is a virtual lab. So you just download um, this other software that allows you to log in um, into a remote system that has all the software that you will need for the program, because not all of the um, courses um, have it open source like R um, to use, right? And But R is something you can run from your base computer. Other questions? or additional follow-ups. I've put Eric's email in the chat. If you have any specific questions or you think of something later, feel free to reach out to him. Just real quick announcement. Our next webinar is going to be toward the end of September. Um, we, there's a lot of new changes in project management. And one of our uh, more seasoned instructors, Phil Jones, is going to do um, a presentation on what's new in project management at PMI. We want to thank everyone for attending. Um, you've got Eric's email. You have my email. If you have just any general questions for um, advising your student services, their emails are right there on the screen at msom or msem at ugark.edu. You, of course, have our links to our wonderful website with a, uh, a lot of information. And again, just a reminder, registered participants will receive an email with this video link to the webinar, uh, to some, hopefully sometime tomorrow, um, if I can get it to initialize correctly, and then um, some additional info as well as follow-up contact info. So we hope to see you online next month. Uh, feel free to share this recording or a presentation with any colleagues that you might think uh, would be interested in any of our programs. So. Again, I want to thank Dr. Eric Specking for his very informative um, presentation today and for his time and for everyone else's uh, sharing your evening with us. Uh, we appreciate that. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.